343 reports on a few fixes that they've made since the technical preview, some leaked multiplayer maps and customization which looks kind of questionable, and 343 makes the ultimatum between Fruit and the Needler. Want to know more? Well stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So it's great to see that 343 is already being proactive on fixing a lot of things that came up through the technical preview. That's the reason why we do these flights. That's the reason why that 343 gives us the opportunity to play the game, report back bugs and issues because 343 can only do so much testing with so many people until the point where you have to give the game out to the people out in the public to get a chance to get some true data back and 343 looks to be ready to be fixing a lot of those things. So in this video where I cover all the things that have already been fixed up in Halo Infinite as well as some leaks that are currently happening from the data mine of Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of video make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as we wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So this tweet here from Unishank does a great job of just doing a quick synopsis of everything that they fixed so far when it comes to Halo Infinite. Saying in case you haven't seen the Halo Infinite tech preview video from IGN, here are a few key takeaways. That 343 has fixed the GTX 900 issued, a misconfiguration impacted the per PC performance, and also fruit physics or the kneeler you must choose kind of situation, which is kind of funny because, uh, well, if you guys don't know, there's been some issues going on with the fruit going on with uh, Halo Infinite, but we'll get into that a little bit later in this video. First, we want to talk about the PC performance as there was a lot of issues with that. Uh, from what we've seen from the tech preview, I made a video on this previously as well. Uh, for also Digital Foundry also made a video on this talking about how the consoles seem to work out pretty well for themselves, even though last gen consoles, but, PC seemed to have some kind of issues where basically it was kind of struggling to hold 60 frames per second no matter what build you had. IGN was testing out like their massive, just like incredible top of the top, top, top of the line PC build and it was struggling to hold 60 frames. Apparently there was a misconfiguration issue going on with the PC where basically you have to make sure you had all your frames unlocked, set something on the base level of your operating system and then you would have a smooth 60 frame experience. The thing is that you shouldn't have to really do that to make sure you have a good experience. There's some kind of misconfiguration going on with the PC side of things of Halo Infinite. It's great to see 343 being proactive and trying to fix this before the next flight. They even mentioned exactly how the experience should be with the next flight for Halo Infinite. The engineering team at 343 did say that they do expect to see maintain a 60 plus frames for the launch of Halo Infinite, which as a PC player, you kind of expect to hit 120 frames for the most part for your games. At least have the capability to do that, either like tone down the resolution or graphics or in your settings and things like that. To be maintain just 60 frames guaranteed at launch is a little concerning for me, to be honest. Though I have a feeling what they mean by that is being able to play at 4K on a beefy build and still get 60 frames. I think that's kind of what they're talking about. I'm still just hoping to play at 1440p 60fps because I'm running a 1080 Ti which isn't exactly the most up-to-date graphics card but it handled it just most part just fine playing the flight though it was kind of pushing it at its limits. Now I mentioned fruit for some reason. In Halo Infinite, fruit is becoming a bit of an issue or a non-issue of some sorts with uh, this game right now. Uh, I th think the fact that we're arguing about fruit physics right now is actually probably a good sign that Halo is actually probably being a pretty good game and the fact that you're getting upset about fruit physics shows that there's not really a whole lot to be complaining about the gameplay. But the whole reason why fruit is becoming a thing is because a Twitter user OGG1993 posted up this video showcasing the fruit physics within Halo Infinite compared to Call of Duty and he's just saying, I'm just gonna leave this here. And I'm just kinda like, okay, what kind of uh, examples are you gonna show here? You can, so, something egregious with the fruit physics and yeah, basically, like when you shoot the fruit in Halo Infinite, it just kind of explodes compared to Call of Duty, where like each individual fruit explodes kind of thing. And so <laughs> I'm just thinking like, okay, so now we're breaking down to the point where now we need to start complaining about the fruit of Halo Infinite. So I think we're actually a pretty good point in the game where if this is an issue for some people to kind of break your immersion of the game in some capacity or whatnot, then I think uh, the Halo Infinite's gameplay is in a pretty good state. This could just be a joke or maybe this guy actually was being serious. I couldn't really tell to be honest. I even felt the need to reply to this tweet just saying like me, wow, gameplay and weapons feel amazing. Some random guy on Twitter, banana. 
So like I said, I think we're in a pretty good state right now when it comes to Halo Infinite's gameplay. Obviously, I'd like to see the PC performance be a lot better, but we'll just have to wait until the next flight to see how that actually does improve. But at least now the community has some tips and tricks on how to get a workaround right now at the moment. But let's get into the next bit of news is some leaked information about Halo Infinite and how the customization and the maps might be kind of looking iffy. Now I would show you guys these images I'm looking at right here, but uh, Sketch doesn't want that to happen. I recently put out a tweet saying, uh, this is important, please do not post datamide content to your channel. You run the very real risk of getting the takedown notice, which will result in a strike on certain platforms. If you have already posted content, we recommend removing it from your channel proactively. But that doesn't stop the internet from posting things because uh, I guess there are no takedown notices when it comes to web pages. And uh, this web page posted some of the images and it looked kind of interesting exactly what they're showing. Let's start with the customization. It showed like a series of helmets which looked just fine to me, like just looked like regular helmets in the most part. Some kind of un more unique looking odd ones, but they still look kind of cool for the most part. Uh, but one of them looked kind of odd was like a snowman. Yeah, there's like a snowman helmet. Uh, the thing is kind of brings up more of the conversation of kind of more wacky customization and things like that. These also could be just timed seasonal events because obviously with the game releasing most likely in November, they'll probably have some kind of like Christmas themed kind of holiday themed kind of stuff as in holiday themed assets within the game, which could totally make sense. But this also could just be legitimate customization. But I think this brings up a bigger point of wacky customization within, within multiplayer experiences which some people are for it, some people are against it. Uh, we, I mean, we've, we've pretty much seen this previously with other games, especially with Call of Duty as well, that the more outrageous, wacky kinds of customization out there tends to get more attention than your cool looking stuff. Because most people play video games casually and just kind of be having some fun and be you know, breaking the immersion of the experience is kind of part of that fun. It might be you know a good way to kind of set themselves out from the masses of people who are trying to look cool. They could do something funny and wacky in the process. Me personally, when it comes to the multiplayer side of things, I'm okay with that, honestly. Like it doesn't really bother me too much. I don't really play multiplayer for like the immersion and like the lore aspect, lore accurate kind of look to the whole thing. If you want to do some weird things like look like a snowman while playing Halo Infinite, honestly, I'm all for that. Though as long as the gameplay is fine, that's all I really care about. And I think most people will agree as well. I mean, I'm looking at the image and it's actually kind of funny. I mean, personally, I would like to see just more kind of like in-universe lore kind of cool looking armor so that's rather than wacky kind of looking things. But I mean, it at least looks better than Seeker from Halo 5, but so I can at least agree with that. But yeah, we do have like the season one fracture of the Yoroi armor set, which is like a samurai armor set, not exactly lore accurate. And they did state that these fractures will be kind of like separate from like the in-game lore kind of stuff. So we definitely could see some seasonal content that would be more kind of interesting, I guess the way they call the customization. Because 343 stated there's going to be content you can unlock that's not exactly going to be lore accurate. But obviously there is like a line to be drawn between like funny, wacky, and just like obnoxious kind of stuff. And like we just kind of see what happens when we cross that line really. I mean I've seen stuff similar to this happen like with Destiny 2, right? With like the Halloween event, you can have like a pumpkin on your head while playing multiplayer and just the game in general. I think it's just kind of a fun little like seasonal customizational kind of thing. So just playing part of the moment kind of thing. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But obviously, like I mentioned earlier, there's a line to be drawn when it comes to just like seasonal fun stuff and wacky, obnoxious things. I just hope we don't get to that point. And some recent images have been going around of some multiplayer maps as well. One of the maps showcase is Behemoth, which we had showcased previously, which also shows up in the trailer. So that kind of gives a little bit more legitimacy to this leak as well. I won't really be able to describe exactly what we're seeing here, but to say like, Two of the maps look like very much like they're playing like on top of the Halo ring, you know, classic kind of like open field mountainous kind of terrain with a lot of trees and stuff like that. One of them looks very interesting, much more urban indoor kind of stuff. If I had to compare it to anything that I'm looking at, I'd say it'd probably be the cut map from Halo Online called Skybridge, which is a map that has been rumored that they wanted to put into Halo 
MCC right now, but obviously it hasn't been added in at the moment, but you can kind of see like this is kind of like the visual style that the map from Halo Infinite is kind of looking like. So maybe this could be just like actually just the map itself that was just cut content from Halo Online. And maybe they modeled it from the Skybridge map from this and put it in Halo Infinite. I doubt that, but I'm saying like this is kind of like the visual style that the map has, at least from like the single image that we have. So that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind, like what kind of art style we're looking here. So not every map is going to be something that's going to be like you know wild you know terrain from the pacific northwest we're gonna see a variety of things especially within the multiplayer side of things so if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out the videos right here i got a playlist for all my halo news videos we'll be uploading daily about so thank you so much for watching and greatly appreciate it i'll catch you all in the next one peace out